and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Jund mid-range. So we got a donation deck here where we are go ahead and going to go ahead and Jund up the place here. So what we're doing here is we're playing our uh, you know early, early green creatures, right? The mana creatures. We have some explore stuff. We're not going Wild Growth Walker um, as Wild Growth Walker really isn't that uh, spectacular in the format. It's kind of slow. And so we're really just going uh, Paradise Druid. Like instead, we want to ramp instead of playing Wild Growth Walker. <clears throat> um, and then, but we have the, the Branch Walker that helps us hit land drops, and so does Jade Light. They still like put some pressure, can attack, help you hit land drops. So we're going with those cards more and trying to get to land drops because we're trying to get to this top end. Um, we have Liliana, Ugin, and fan favorite Casualties of War as our six drop. So we have six, six drops. So that's what we're trying to do is get up to these top ones. This Casualties of War is always a, a pretty fun and exciting card. Get to destroy so much stuff. So yeah, so that's what we're doing. We're, we're kind of ramping into that. And besides that, we have good we have good quality removal. You know, between Legion's End, Vrass's Contempt, Bedevil, Assassin's Trophy. We have four really good quality removal spells. Golgari Queen is a good Swiss Army Knife that can do a little bit of everything. Um, and Cavalier Thorns helps ramp us and gets us to these six mana cards. <clears throat> so as you can tell here, we're basically Golgari. We're splashing for two cards. We have Bedevils in here because we are playing red, but really uh, the reason why we're playing red is so that we have access to Blood Suns because the these uh, Golgari decks are like, you know, like they're, they're pretty good and they got like a good late game, but they don't have quite as good of a late game as Field of the Dead has. Like Field of the Dead is still just a, a really problematic card to deal with over and over and over. Even if you are playing Field of Ruin, Assassin's Trophy, Casualties of War, it's still difficult to deal with those and scape shift and everything so we got we're splashing for blood suns here in this deck i'm excited to try out uh finale of eternity we get to destroy some creatures and maybe if if it's really late game we got 10 mana we get to return all of our creature cards from our graveyard to the battlefield that would be awesome but there we go we got some other cheap interaction over here let's see how this does let's play some jund midrange Hey, what's up? Thank you so much, good brother. Kicking off Good Brother Friday. Good. Thanks so much for the big cheer. All right, well, let's try this deck. Let's see how we do. I think we're going to pick up some wins. So, yeah, the donation decks, we're playing them over in the... We're playing leagues. We're playing, seeing if we can get to five wins before two losses. So, question here was, is Blood Sun worth, worth crafting when planning on playing Historic? I think if you're going to be playing a good amount of standard in the next three weeks, I think it is worth crafting because it, it really is important if you're playing red and standard right now. I think if you're playing red and standard, you really need Blood Suns in your sideboard. Uh, need, yeah. I mean, I, I would have, like, I have them in every single uh, sideboard there. But if you're, as far as, like, are they going to be good in Historic? I think they're going to be good in Historic right away. Um, and, you know, probably for the... Because I think Field of the Dead, Scape Shift, all that kind of stuff, that's probably going to be um, popular in Historic for a while. But over time, you know, like maybe in, in six months, a year, two years, three years, you know, probably at some point there turns there gets to start being more powerful things to be doing in Historic. I don't know. You know, like it's, it's hard to say for the long run. But I think if you're planning on playing Historic, uh, you know, for the next few months... I can't really imagine that we're going to have a historic without Field of the Dead at all. Um, I mean, I, I could imagine if there's something in Throne of Eldraine that really kills Field of the Dead, but I'm not sure about that. But hopefully that helps answer your question. Uh, what's up, Lincoln Toxic? Oh, man, I, I'm right there with you, Grace. I wish that Ravager Worm could eat Field of the Dead. That would be awesome. All right, so our opponent's going uh, like Rakdos Control, basically here. A 
We got duress and carnival. Hey, <laughs> yeah. We're playing Jun midrange and standard. Monastery Mentor. Alright, so do we trade with the 1 1? I mean, like, all, like the Branch Walker is just a 2 1. Nah. But the Branch Walker is not really that special either. All right, so I am willing to contempt War Boss with all these other really good at six mana cards. Let's see if they do anything else first. The Dallas area doesn't have that that kind of humidity. It has hundred, you know, it's hundred degrees like every day in July and August, but it doesn't have much humidity. I. I am honestly not I'm honestly not sure if Esper Hero or Esper Control is better. So, you know, whether you should switch from Esper Hero to Esper Control right now, honestly don't know. I I like them both. I think they're both pretty good. But I don't I don't necessarily think Control's better than Hero, but I don't necessarily think that Hero's better than Control either. Um Honestly, just don't play the two decks enough to really have a gauge on which one to go with. But if you're kind of struggling with hero right hey, now and want to switch to control, I would, Fire I fast. would certainly say Good go for help. it. So, come on, deck draw land, draw land one time. Don't, you have another carnival. Ooh. We drew the land also. No. All right. What the heck? Deck draw land two times. <laughs> What's up, Ryan? The tie. You want to close up with the tie? It's just. It's just a basically a plain, plain black tie. Uh, it has a little bit of pattern there. But it's just all black. These one mana spells. Duress in particular is really nice here. They get to take two things. I'll probably take Ugin and Casualties of War. Well, actually, they probably just take Ugin and Liliana. Oh, that wasn't a new duress. That was already Minus Chandra. Okay, I thought they had a brand new duress where they're going to be able to duress, then Minus Chandra and duress again. But they already did Minus Chandra. So, nev mind. Hey, seriously, why not? Getting a gifted sub from Paul. Thank you so much there, Paul. Paul with 50 gifted subs throughout the month? Wow, Paul, thank you so much. No, I've never read the next level magic book. I've, I've never read that. <laughs> I can't believe Mother Ludi gave us homework. I yeah, I guess it must be the update why Deckmaster isn't working. I don't I don't know why it isn't. Paul is the MVP. So many duresses. Remember this one? The opponent's so mean. We have six six mana spells that we've really wanted to cast, and our opponent duressed away four of them. Four of them, I tell you. Nev. 
Ugh, now we're gonna start top decking the land. Okay, um... Alright, so, wait, black... Black hedgehogs, you, you know how to fix deckmaster? Or... So, okay, you have to enable the detailed log output for it to work from top left of gear settings to account settings. Like, in, in where? Like, in Twitch? Where, where, where am I? Or, like, in Deckmaster? Evolution, like, where, where do I go? In what settings? Inside Arena Client. Okay. Inside the arena client, outside of a game. Okay. Because, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, Hedgehog, you were telling me yesterday about settings, and I was looking at, like, settings, like, in Deckmaster and everything. I couldn't find anything. Yeah, our opponent's got, like, a Rakdos mid-range control deck. I don't think Historic will get played in paper right away, but I could see it getting played in paper a couple years down the line if it really picks up, but not it won't right away. Well, good news for us that the Cavalier didn't die in response to the trigger, so we can put a removal spell back on top if they do kill Cavalier. Because we can double up removal spells. Well, I mean, I guess we have Contempt in here, though. We'd be able to grab Contempt. These carnages have been so good against us. Killed two land war elves earlier with carnivals. And we're one point short. One point short from making them chump lock. Dang, so close. What's up, Ashtaf? Yeah, I've been seeing the Throne of Eldrain cards. At first, I, I thought that the Throne of Eldrain cards looked really weak from, like, that the rares did from, from a, from the a rare standpoint. Great but Loyal I didn't realize I that do that was, um, that, like, basically all of those rares were... were the Brawl Deck rares, and they haven't really been previewing rares from the normal set yet. Alright, we're gonna draw the Cavalier th of w or the Casualties of War here so that I can kill Liliana and this token. So we're gonna take out both of these. Hilo! With a tier 1 sub. You are amazing, Hilo. Thank you so much. Sub number 19 on the day. Dead. Man, y'all have been awesome today. Got finished off by Chain Whirler. Alright, so we want these Vela Summers to counter... <clears throat> I need to counter all these duresses. 
Oko looks really strong. Both both three mana planeswalkers look really strong. The problem with Command the Dread Horde is it looked like that, you know, they had a pretty decent amount of burn. I don't know. I don't think we need to change too much, honestly. I think maybe I actually cut either Paradise Druid or Land War Elf, though, because they have Chain Whirler and all those. I guess we cut Land War Elf and keep Paradise Druid. Because the game's going to go long. Yeah, game should go pretty long. Ripjaw is good against Chain Whirler, but not so good against just Black Removal. It is good against Chain Whirler. I'm fine with playing it. I don't really want a third bedevil. We'll play it. I don't know if there was like really enough cre creatures to kill for finale, honestly. Okay, it looks like my opponent's probably gonna have like one creature out at a time. So not thrilled about finale. Yeah, Kilo, I was struggling the other day. Well, this is going really bad. You've never seen anything like this. Now. I want to save Contempt for Phoenix. I don't really have a better option to kill that Sahili, and don't think it's good to have it just sit back and draw a whole lot of cards. What an interesting creature. Let's see how you work. Yeah, yeah, I was having trouble with the store also. I, I couldn't I wanted to get the pre order. But I wasn't able I wasn't able to do the get the pre order. Innovation knows no bounds. There's something wrong I with the store. Return. And so it was like right after the pre order started though, so I just figured it was, you know, something momentary, so I was gonna try it again sometime soon, but I hadn't gotten back around to it. These carnages have been so rough. Both games were just stuck at five with these six mana cards. Uh, are you kidding me? Ugh. 
So in two games, we've had seven six mana cards all get discarded. Whoa, Bedevil has a new animation. Did y'all see that? New Bedevil animation. Yeah, their deck looked real good. I mean, it also just... This is the thing about, like... People probably don't realize that... Um, you know, a, a good reason why we lost this is because we're playing Assassin's Trophy. The... The real downside to Assassin's Trophy, like my opponent having that extra two mana really made their, really helped out their deck. Um, it allowed them to play like Carnage and Chain Whirler together, and then Carnage plus kicking Remodi Reveler. Uh, those trophies really hurt us, giving our opponent all those extra lands. see the power of what lands are whenever we're sitting over there with none or with five and all of our cards cost six I don't I don't play modern. I've never played Modern Infect. Too. I guess I have played Modern Infect in a tournament. I've played Tron a lot more than Infect. I think I only played Infect one weekend. Every game we're drawing a ton of our six drops, of our six six drops. We've had three. We have three of them this game. This is like the least that we've had. We've had three plus each time. And we've had five lands every game. Also. This is good for us if they just want to If I don't block If I don't block 
then you know we go to five and they can also sacrifice the ember hauler to make it three so then any three damage spell we die I don't think we can win a whole game if we would die to three damage burn spells. If we would have hit the land drop here, I would have gone Casualties of War to get rid of one of those lands also. Alright, we're down to one. At least we've cast two casualties of war. So that's good. Alright, we gotta take out these six drops. Even though they're the best part of our deck, but we're just we're not drawing anything in the middle of our deck at all. Definitely want finale, Legion's End, Raptor, Bedevil. We'll go trophy here. We can duress even. Get rid of Liliana's casualties, Ugin's. Do we just get rid of all of them? If we play two six drops, what's the best one? Liliana, Ugin, or casualties? I guess Ugin. Right? Because Ugin can get rid of. Like, I don't even know if they'll have Cavalcade of Calamity, actually. They probably don't. Okay, this is what we're going to go with. Yeah, we can't really just draw a bunch of mana mana dorks towards the end of the game, so cutting those from 8 to 4 here. Because our, our uh, deck has a ton of interaction now. All different two drops for my Legion's End. Because Wild Growth Walker has gotten really bad with Little Teferi. And all the other green decks go over the top of Wild Growth Walker. Wild Growth Walker is only good against aggro if you get to play it and it survives and you play an explore creature. It's really not very good against anything else in the metagame at all. That's why we're not playing Wild Growth Walker. Yeah, Steamkin's got new animation too. It's like the devil. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm hoping that our opponent just plays another two drop here. Ugh. I guess it need to be Ember Hauler, but no, that's that's bad. Now they get to pump this Steamkin. Oh, and they have another shock. All right, it all went bad. Hmm. So it should be shocking Branch Walker. So assuming they do that with Arcanist. Oh, that's really good for us. They didn't hold up in Fury. That's really good for us. All right, so we're gonna shock here. You know, we'll shock and go finale. You're a safe driver there, Matthew. That's good. All right, so finale looked pretty great. The double block means they can't just infuriate and save their creature. All right, we kept two Ugans in the deck. Let's see if we can draw one. I'd like to use a different removal spell on that, which I guess is going to be Bedevil, so we can still gain the life with Contempt. Thanks, Forecast. Thanks, Butte. Yeah, that was a that was a good block. Works better. Not really worth me using this contempt on. We're at five. No, not an Arcanist. Ugh. Look at them over there with four lands and us with nine. <laughs> We're not going to win that kind of match. I guess, oh, that's, they have Infuriate. So they could put us to one. Shock puts us to two. Rough. 
All right, well, John didn't do so good for us. Yeah, we did not get paired against Field of the Dead. That's what we really wanted to get paired against with trophies, casualties, blood suns. But, um, yeah, I mean, we just had a, a bad case of, you know, either drawing three plus six drops early on in the game, which is, you know, it's really hard to win whenever you do that. If, if you know, you're not just curving out into them. If you just, if you have five lands and your, your hand is just only six mana cards, you're just going to be too slow and get run over. And that's what happened with three games. And then we had that last game where we actually had good interaction. We stopped them and, and we're, we're doing pretty good, but our opponent just never let up. They just, they hit their four lands um, and never, they never drew another land. They just kept on drawing spell, 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 and we ended up drawing five more lands than them. And you know, like that's that's good form of card advantage right there. They had five extra spells that we didn't have, um, and got ran over there. So, um, okay, thank you, but. So that's John to mid range. Um, yeah, didn't work out too well for us, but really, our I don't I don't think there was anything like necessarily like that wrong with the deck that I like you know anything that really complain about too much. Uh, you know, like we are relying on our eight mana creatures some, and we had we played against three decks with a ton of good inter like you know we played against three decks three red de or sorry we played against two red decks so i was thinking of the three games but you know two red decks and so they they all had really good cheap interaction for the mana creatures you know we saw a lot of a lot of carnival carnage that really wrecked us but then also just shocks killing our mana creatures and so then it was tough to get to six mana for all these six drops um which which that happens you know that happens so just tip the hat to the opponent um yeah could take out could take out trophies uh those yeah i mean could take out trophies it really really hurt against the mid-range deck honestly i, d I didn't side we're the best against that that game one matchup i i think we should have taken out trophy in that matchup uh if, like i didn't bring in duress like maybe we, we bring in duress instead of trophy then we could have duressed away like the sahilis and stuff i think that would have been better Red is for Blood Sun, and then we're just playing Bedevil because it's a good, it's a really good quality removal spell here at, at the three mana slot. But really, we're we're a rock deck uh, to play Blood Sun because of how strong that card is against all these Field of the Dead decks everywhere. Yeah, I brought in Veil of Summer. Yeah, I did bring in Veil of Summer as the game one, the 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 first round. Um, no. Blood Sun's a lot better than Ferocidon against Scapeshift. So I wouldn't I would not just take out Blood Sun from your sideboard and put in Ferocidon. Blood Sun's a better card. But Ferocidon because because Ferocidon's so easy to deal with. Ferocidon's just good in, in a wide variety of matchups. I, I think that if you're playing red aggro like mono red aggro, you should be playing both of them. I wouldn't just take out Blood Suns though. I think you should get both of them. But but all right, so there's John Midrange. Um, yeah. Uh, that's about all to say about the deck. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe buttons over there. Um, let me know what you think of the deck. What? Let me know what you want to do with Casualties of War. Because I think Casualties of War is a pretty fun card to play. And... Uh, Another option, of course, is, is just playing Golgari here with four Field of Ruin instead of Blood Sun. You know, then then with Field of Ruin, Assassin's Trophy goes up a little bit in value, and then you know you can get Casualties of War and all that kind of stuff in there also. Um, but but yeah, um, so yeah, if you're watching later over there, uh, also you know feel free to leave comments, all that kind of stuff. But thanks for watching, Jund Midrange, and I'll see you for the next video.